Hi there. We're going to try and uh, remake this book cover um, to uh, to get you started on making your own personal projects, just so we've got an idea of how it goes layering in text and pictures and bringing everything together. Now, you could be making a birthday card, a Christmas card, poster for an event, any number of things, record cover. Um, right, so getting started, I, I think this book cover is probably around... A5. So I'm going to open up an A5 um, image, which will be under print in A5. Uh, I'm then going to bring this image in, just drag it across. You can always do place embedded and just bring it in because I'm going to use this as like a, a reference point. So it wants to be a little bit larger. That's fine. Um, and I'm going to crop this slightly. Uh, check this is clear. Uh, I'm going to ratio in here and just drag the handles straight in um, press return now we've got a document around A5 but fits the exact dimensions of this book cover um, right so I'm going to make a new layer because I, I want to start off um, I want to start off replicating this white and this black rectangle um, so I'm going to make a layer and call it white rectangle. White rectangle. And I'm just going to drag a box using the rectangle marquee tool. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to select some of this kind of off-white color and fill it white. Um, then I'm going to make a new layer and call it black rectangle. can't hurt to name things and rather than selecting the other part I'm going to go select inverse so I've got the other selection chosen I drop a tool again pick some of this nearly black and then fill in and then I can do control D to deselect everything right so I put my original cover well, the original cover on top then we can we can see the start we've made Right, next in, we need to um, try and recreate this guy. So to do that, I've made a picture of myself, which I'm going to bring in by doing place embedded. Uh, I'm going to drag that in. I'm going to right click it uh, and convert to a smart object. This is a smart object now. I'm then going to mess with the levels. And I'll bring up the... Uh, the low levels, dial up some of the high ones to give it that kind of half let effect. Um, that's fine. And let's let's click the uh, clipping mask, so we're uh, only affecting our picture. Let's do a uh, black and white. It's a black and white image kind of, isn't it? So let's turn up the yellow to really get that. Minimize, so we're really, we're really only getting the eye on one side of the face. Um, right, so it's those. Um, let's merge them together. Oh, let's convert them to a smart object, even if it'll let us. And then let's go to filter, filter gallery. And we're we using uh, this cutout selection which isn't on by default, but it's under artistic. And number of levels is like how many pieces of paper this has been cut from, like stacked up on top of each other. Edge simplicity, it goes quite photographic to quite a angular cutout. That's not, that's not bad, about maybe five. Edge fidelity, what's that do? That's like the detail in the edges. That wants to be quite low. Let's have it all the way down to one. And let's OK that. Uh, so far, so good. Let me just uh, drag the original cover to our top layer and turn down its opacity so we can see through it. Right, I want to move the picture of me around. And to, oh, let's turn off auto select layer. Wow. Well, let's grab the same layer twice. I want the black and white picture of me. I want to drag it over where 
the original photo is. Smart filter by the display will be turned off temporarily. That's fine. It just needs to turn them off while we're moving things around. So I'm going to position that about there and go OK. And all those effects will go back on it. So far, so good. Now, this white rank rectangle needs to go above it, above the picture of me. So I'm hiding the top half of my head. Uh, it's also it's also kind of purple isn't it look at this purple color so if I get on my eyedropper tool and select this kind of purple I'm going to make a new layer on top of my black and white picture which we're going to call purple overlay ah purple purple overlay I'm going to use the ink, ink block tool to fill it purple change the blend mode to ooh. I think multiply might be the one to use let's have a look hard light vivid light linear light let's have linear light let's call it purple linear light The best one to use is the one which looks best, right? Okay. How are we doing so far? I think we're gaining, right? Right, next we want to use um, a font. Um, now I've decided I'm using Helvetica. I've included um, a free version of Helvetica in the folder. Um, but you can look on the font website, thefont.com, for fonts. And if you're not sure what the font is, um you need for a particular image if you google font finder it'll take you to a website where you can upload an image and select part of the text and it will try and identify the font for you right let's turn my uh text layer on again and select that and we're going to use the type tool but helvetica selected already now it wants to be in black or near black so let's, let's Let's uh, select near black. Um, font, how big? 30, 60? Let's try 60. Um, and I'm just going to go down, return, boom, D. Right. Um, next, can you see my, my layers of text are overlapping each other? I'm just going to drag over there to select it. Click on this little folder icon here. And I'm going to mess with the leading just to separate my lines of text a bit. That looks about right. There, let's just drag it over it. Um, so the text tool again and drag over the thing. And I want to adjust the, uh, the tracking. Where's the tracking gone? tracking and this is adjusting the overall spacing between the letters so you can go really wide or you can drag them in quite close and I think this one needs quite close I think we're okay with that so I'll turn that off uh, sorry that one off and we're doing about right right so another line of text going in I'm going to select my color hopefully which is this kind of purple colour. It's not selected it. We have to select the text up here, select the colour thing from here, and kind of pink. Ah. Lost my text. Click it. Then select it, maybe. Will that work? There we go. And we shall do all in capitals. The. Let's drag it using the move tool over where it's going. Let's just adjust the leading slightly and let's uh, adjust the tracking uh, just to bring it in a shade. Let's drag it out a little bit wider. That's, that's not a million miles away. 
let's click OK. Uh, let's turn off the original cover. Here's my version of the cover. Um, right, we'll save as just out as a like a JPEG or something. Uh, my version. My version. Uh, JPEG. Okay, let's OK that. Now let's open. There's a final extension task. I've got this Adobe stock thing which comes with the cloud. Um, and it lets us do, lets it kind of show our image as if it was on the, on, on the um, front of a pile of books. Now to work this, see it's got a, um, a thing which says your design here. And if you look closely, it's a smart object. So if we double click on the smart object, we get this in, insert your design here window. So we can go file, uh, place embedded, and it's uh, my version. We're going to place this into here. Hold down Alt to drag it out so it fills the whole window. Uh, and click OK. Now when we close this, it'll ask us to save it. We go yes, save it. And when we go back, as if by magic, it's laid it on the uh, on the cover of the books. Good job. Thank you for watching.